this is Jessica from Twin Cities Media, and I am sitting in here with Simothwa from here in the Twin Cities. So it's me, and then I'm sitting in here with my coworker Langan. Hey guys, it's Langan. <laughs> and then I'll just have you guys go around and introduce yourself, say your name, and um, what your role in the band is. I am Justin, and I play bass. That's my role. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, I'm Jeff, and I play guitar. I'm Tony, I play drums. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming in. We're glad to have you here. And um, we're going to be talking about the new record that is coming out. So why don't you guys just tell us the name and just a little um, of the rundown. It's called Destination Exile. And... Uh, we play our CD release show on June 30th at Lee's Liquor Lounge. It's kind of a new CD, but it's kind of a old CD with some new stuff, new artwork. Awesome. So did you guys re-record the songs that had been previously released or just recorded the new ones that are going to be on here? Uh, we re-recorded a really old song that we never had a recording of with Tony on drums. Uh, but otherwise, they it's been revamped too. So it's basically three new songs. Okay. And then where do you guys record? Do you have like a studio in the Twin Cities that you guys work with, or? Uh, yeah, we record at fourteen fifty nine Studios with uh, Will Marvelous. Maybe just tell us a little bit too how long you guys have been playing together. Um, maybe how you guys met, and yeah, just a little history of the band. <laughs> Uh, well, the, the band started as Less Than Nothing in 99, I believe. Sounds That's about right. the name of the band, not the quality of the band. And uh, so it was Tony on drums, Justin on bass, me on guitar, uh, and we had a singer at the time, and we had a guy doing keyboards and turntables. And another guitar player. Eventually another guitar player yeah. joined, yes. Did a couple different bands. One was called Lavinia... Got a new drummer, formed this band, Simothwa. So then uh, we got a hold of Tony, who we hadn't seen in a long time, and he was our drummer from like 18 years ago. So he <laughs> happened to he happened to be just chilling at his house, uh, watching re reruns of Full House or something. Yeah, mostly. So Full we're House. like, hey, we need a drummer. What you doing? And uh, he was like, yeah, I'll do that. And, and then we, we started are. this. Yeah. Well, should we go ahead and take a listen to um, the first track off of the record, which is called Cookies and Cremation? was yeah the first track off of the new record called cookies and cremation so the next one that we want to talk about is called baloney danza which is very fun to say so <laughs> why don't you guys tell us i mean the name is interesting but just tell us about the track and recording and all of our songs are named very just goofy because we're I, I like to think we're some pretty funny dudes, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I mean, we just come up with, with goofy play on words stuff because like the definition of our band, we're three guys with lots of riffs and no meaning. So <laughs> there's, there's no meaning behind it, but. So is this a older song um, that was redone for the, um, Record nope. or was this is this a new one? No, this is a, this is a newer one. Okay, and we just released a music video for this song. Okay, that we uh, just kind of got together and had some fun and made a video, and it turned out pretty pretty damn yeah. good. So very very proud of our our video. That's great. Did so, you guys film it here in the in the area? We filmed uh, filmed it in our older practice studio, 
and that was the playing portion of it, and then the rest of it was filmed at my house, and it's... The whole idea behind it is Tony and Jeff are forcing me to eat bologna sandwiches. <laughs> I want to go watch this. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of gross. It's something. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing nothing better than uh, watching someone eat a bologna sandwich in 4K slow motion. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's uh, <laughs> yep. it's pretty awesome. And I... I just think we did something different, and that's what we try to do with our music, is something different. And with the video, it was definitely something different, because we're a heavy band, but, you know, we... Not weight-wise. Well, not not, not weight-wise. I I mean, I'm getting a little bit fatter, <laughs> because are. I, I, you know, I don't know. I'd, All that bologna sandwiches. Yeah, well, those bologna sandwiches. But... You know, you got a lot of bands that are like, look how heavy we are and look how evil we are. But there's not a lot of people doing, look how goofy we are. <laughs> and being creative. Was, I think we were creative with our music video as much as we are creative with our music. So it was a a point of pride in in for me with right. what we've done. So. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, should we go ahead and uh, take a little listen to Baloney Danza? Why not? <laughs> That was, again, Baloney Danza off of the new record. And so the third track is Gather the Hostages. And so why don't you guys tell us about the writing, recording, um, anything, you know, noteworthy on that one? Well, we, when we write stuff, we just kind of come up with the riffs and then we give them certain names so we can organize them on our little whiteboards. And that one, we decided to come up with, I don't know, like a bank hostage takeover theme. And with all the riff names, I don't even remember what I, they were. I don't remember where that name came from. Yeah, it was all. it was from all of the, it was from all the, now we're going to storm, storm the building. And then there was, there was like a bunch of different names that we had. And we came up with Gather the Hostages. So yeah, that, was, that was a hazy period. In my life, I was drinking a lot of Pepsi. <laughs> a lot of Pepsi, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Pepsi Cola that'll fade yeah, out real quick. Just mess me up. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what that's all of our names are. Just we just do puns and yep. goofy stuff because we like to try and be funny, even though we try and make serious music. <laughs> it's not the it's not like the most difficult thing we've ever written, but. It takes a long time to put it together to where it's like, okay, that works. You know, we tried to jam some stuff and force some stuff in there. And then <clears throat> it's like, well, if we take that out or back off on this and I don't know, it's just, it's always a process. Right. It's, it's. And know, when you find it, like you anything. know it, you know, yeah. you know, you found it and you realize that that two months of uh, bullshit. Yeah, was kind of a waste of time, and we could have figured it out. Like but that. then, it, but, that's but then, it's, it, but then it's it's two months of bullshit to write a three minute song. Mm -hmm. Like that's the song, and then we went a month of doing that song, and then we're like, but it's never felt right. Right. And then it was like one small little switch, and we're totally golden. Well, on that, I mean, is there anything else that you guys want to add about Gather the Hostages, or should we just it, it's, take a listen? It's got some tricky timing. Yep. So and it's an old, out. it's an old song from the first rendition of the band uh, when Tony wasn't there, and now Tony's there on that one. So 
I got to have fun. I think it's heavier and uh, just a better version of the song. Mm -hmm. Should we take a listen? Gather the Hostages, the third track off of the record. And so now we're kind of moving into the middle here, Hammer Party. What um, can you guys tell us about this? Tony. Tony. Oh, God. <laughs> um, yeah. That was, a, that was a little kind of a weirder song. Like it has little changes and stuff in there that uh, at first when we were writing it, I was just kind of like, what am I going to do to this? Because obviously we start arranging riffs and things like that and I'm kind of the last person in as soon as they have an arrangement that they like then I and it's solid then I and I have ideas along the way but I don't like um I don't like do my final my final part until they basically stop changing it <laughs> so that one was a little different a uh, little different and difficult but um in, in a way, too, when you listen to the song, it doesn't sound like it's even hard to play at all. That's kind of, I think, the illusion of it. <laughs> like, uh, people could listen to it and be like, that sounds like it's easy. Well, go ahead. Give it a shot. It was difficult. I didn't know exactly how I wanted to go about doing it. And the whole thing was, once again, us naming the riffs. It was, we named riffs around uh, drinking beers. Right. So Hammer Schlagen was in there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's where we came with Hammer Party. Would you guys say, like, maybe this is a weird question, but would you guys say, like, you're making the music for yourselves or? Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally yeah. selfish. 100%. Yeah. I, uh, well, me and Tony are almost 40. So. What else can you do? Yeah. <laughs> well, I can do a lot of things. We're not. <laughs> tons of stuff. We're not the next Nickelback. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah well, definitely not Nickelback. But, uh, yeah, we're just... you got to do everything to make yourself happy and uh, do something creative. And I think we're accomplishing those goals. Right, right. So, And if other people like it... That's awesome. That's cool. I'm not going to get mad at them for liking it. But if they yeah. don't, I'm not going to get mad go, for that either. Yeah, but if they don't, go on the old Facebook page and post how horrible we are and how bad we are so that there's more PR for <laughs> our shit because it doesn't matter. Right. I mean, there's just too many bands out there. I'm 38 years old and have two children, and if I didn't think that what we did was awesome, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fucking do it. So, do your kids you know, listen to your music? Yeah, yeah, they do. There's no lyrics, they? so there's nothing. <laughs> yeah, like they think it's awesome. They like it, just like I think it's awesome. <laughs> Runs in the family. No, they do. They, they think it's funny. Excellence. No, I was changing my bass strings today before we went to practice because it's Sunday. Because all metal bands practice at ten thirty in the morning on a Sunday. <laughs> I gotta all say that really loud because. <laughs> I think because we're the only one. You know, we're probably and well. I don't know yeah, anybody who practice any metal band that practices at ten thirty in the morning on a Sunday. You let us know if you didn't go to church and you went to band practice. So I was practic. I I was changing my strings today because we got the show on June thirtieth at Lee's Liquor Lee's Lounge. Lee's <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Uh, so I was changing my bass strings and my daughter's like, it's like, play like a rock star. And I said, what? And so I just did a little funky, slappity thing. And she goes, you're not playing like a rock star dad. <laughs> she keeps you accountable. Yeah. Thanks, Dahlia. It was real nice. Real nice of you. So, yeah. 
Let's be just, honest. Yeah, keep me honest. Yeah, you're not doing it. You're not doing it good, Dad. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'll just keep doing it, and just like I've been doing it forever and ever. Keep so <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great. Well, should we go ahead and I mean, I think we were talking about Hammer Party, so let's go ahead and and take a listen to that. <laughs> I don't think we were, but so whatever. <laughs> I kind of lost track. Yeah, it's songs. <laughs> talking about here is Dawn of the Shred. Um, what can you guys tell us about this one? New one, old one, the recording? Medium time frame, I would say. <laughs> it was when I first came in the band, so it was two yeah. years ago. Two years ago. But we took it, we took the name obviously from Dawn of the Dead, because we love horror movies, so. Yeah. And Langan, favorite horror movie? <laughs> Don't do horror. Don't do no, horror? No. Oh, you're more of a notebook type of girl? I am. I love the notebook. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'll never let go. <laughs> yeah, Except I just did, and now you're floating away dying in the frozen water. Right, yeah, but, yeah. you're done. Uh, no, it's, uh, I don't know, it's more of a straightforward punk rock metal type of thing where we just shred. Shred it? I mean, it's not like... You know, Slayer shredding, but it's Judah, not Parmesan. Right, it's <laughs> shredding in her own way. Yeah, yeah. It's more of a driving song. Yeah, it yeah. just pounds out. If and, someone had never listened to your guys' music before, how would you describe it, or like, what would your pitch be? Things and stuff, okay. and sometimes stuff and things, with a heavier tone of things. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I always describe no, it as <laughs> instrumental progressive metal. Yeah. I suppose you could go that route. I I would describe it as a remake of Back to the Future with Michael J. Fox now. <laughs> so right. he's slightly more twitchy right. than he was then. That's what I'm saying. He's got more twitch. Well, with that, should we go ahead and take a listen to Dawn of the Shred? You know, we should listen to what she has to say. (laughs) (laughs) Because she's not talking. (laughs) So let's just make her talk a little bit. Well, no, here's a question. So you said this one was more punk rock almost. So I know you guys have your riffs that you come to the table with, but what are your major influences? So you brought up Slayer, but I don't hear much Slayer in your music, but... You know, obviously those riffs that are in your guys' heads or the drum beats that you come up with, Tony, like they've got to come from somewhere. So where where are they coming from? I think, uh, oh, I mean, my big ones are Burnt by the Sun, Mastodon, Burst, a uh, couple local bands that people may have forgot about, but Disembodied and Martyr AD. Love those guys. Uh, but then I grew up listening to... <clears throat> 80s metal, and then when I found found music, uh, a bunch of like 90s punk rock stuff, too. I like a ton of punk rock. Lagwagon, Propagandi, No Effects, Strung Out, um, Descendants. Don't shit forget like that. Guilty Pleasures. You didn't name any Guilty Pleasures like yeah, OMC. Who? OMC. How bizarre, how bizarre. Oh, don't yeah. Pretend oh, like yeah. you That's don't know what I'm favorites. talking about for the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, Onyx, <laughs> the rap group. Yep. No, I like hip-hop, too. Um, I don't know. Old hip-hop. Um, NWA. Well, yeah. Are you are listening to rap No, but, uh, yeah, I was listening to Prof on the way here. I like Prof. I like, I like new, I like new shit. Uh, hieroglyphics, fucking Del the Funky Homo Sapien. That's one of my favorite... Hip hop guys, 
I don't know. Me and Tony are we, not on board just, with what he's saying. They're right? not on board with what I'm saying. But I listen to so much shit because, you know, being a bass player, you got to find the groove all over the place. So that's always fun. It's the appetizer sampler of, <laughs> exactly. of yeah, music. That's our music. <laughs> so our with music that, we'll, we'll go ahead and take a listen to Dawn of the Shred. which is the fifth track off of the newest record from Cy Mothwa. So we're going to jump into Jeff's an asshole. Um, <laughs> Jeff, do you want to tell us anything I, about I, this? I think it's best that I say nothing on this one. <laughs> oh, and let you guys okay. explain why you decided to name a song Jeff's an asshole. It, it's pretty simple because the song was incredibly difficult to write stuff to, and it was just very weird, and we struggled with it a little bit, so... We basically hated on Jeff for quite a while. They were mad at me for writing it. Yes. <laughs> well, it turned out really nice, but it's it's one of those things that uh, I think that's our more technical song that we've ever done, and that was part of the reason is Jeff wrote some riffs and learning how to play them from a bass aspect was difficult. And so I told him he was an asshole for writing those riffs. <laughs> and then we're like, well, that's the name of the song. Because we don't, like, name songs, you know, based off of this or that or have any political reasoning behind anything. It's just, like, we name stuff based off of how we feel. And I felt like Jeff was an asshole when he <laughs> made those riffs, which were super sweet, but it was... Super hard, and for me I didn't to... object to the name. So no, there you yeah, have it. and then okay, that's the name of the song because we literally came up with that name like before we we're going to play it at a show. So like, well, okay, we'll just call it Jeff's an asshole. So that's how that worked out. It was, it worked out pretty good because even you know aside from Jeff writing those super awesome riffs, he is an asshole. Mm -hmm. I, was yeah. wait, I was waiting for that. Yeah. Oh, no. I knew it was coming. <laughs> oh, it came. <laughs> it came. <laughs> uh. Well, on that note, should we go ahead and take a listen to uh, Jeff's an asshole? Can if you want, <laughs> Jeff's an asshole. <laughs> Was Jeff's an asshole. Thank you, Jeff, for, mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> off of the Destination Exile record. Um, so let's, we're getting to the end here, but let's go ahead and jump into the Texas Chainsaw Manicure. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> let's, let's jump in. Pile on in. <laughs> tell us. Tell us about it. Tell us about it, Jeff. Me? Yeah. Uh, oh, I did. Oh, I think I did come up with that name, but uh, that's Justin's favorite movie is Texas yeah. Chainsaw Massacre, so I knew Original. he wasn't going to reject that as a song no, title. No, no. Uh, there was really no inspiration behind the name other than I just thought that would be horrific to walk into a nail shop and get your nails did, and there's yeah. Leatherface. 
Sit on down in the chair, lady. <laughs> you don't want to get your, you don't want to get your nails done, did by well, uh, leather vest. They wouldn't look good. No. And if they did, then props to them. Yeah, I mean he's good with facial features and all he's that. Good at know? hacking off limbs, but yeah, uh, I don't know if he'll be able that. to bedazzle your nails. No, that'll that, be a segue. Now, see now you're segue. Segway. Segway. <laughs> yep, now you got on that two wheeled device. That's for late. Segwayed on to that next one. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, that's just the name that of the song. That is probably my, I, I I don't know if it's my favorite recorded song on the album, but it's probably my favorite written song. Fair enough. Well, <laughs> with that, let's go ahead and take a listen to the Texas Chainsaw Man here. <laughs> Boner. <laughs> so we were to thank you, thank you for that uh, intro here to the uh, the last track. Yes. That was Justin, by the way, uh-huh, for yeah. everyone listening. Yes. So they've totally. got it figured out by now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was the uh, Texas Chainsaw Manicure, and now we want to dive into the last track, which is "Bedazzle That Shit." Oh, shit. Bedazzle yeah, that just, shit. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. it's the last last track on on the record. Was it put there for like a strategic reason or just kind of how it um, everything fell together for the tracking? I think it was a little bit of strategic. It, it's one of the long. Strategery. Uh, it's, as a little strategery. it's a little longer. It, it's a little longer than some of the other ones. It It's very pretty. Yeah. Oh, but so I think, pretty. I think the way it ended and the way. When we did the the five track one, the way it ended and the way the beginning, it kind of made it circular, you know. So that one ended pretty, and then the the first one beginned, 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 yeah, beginned. Not a word at all. Yeah. Uh, and that was just like I I, I kind of came up with this weird long, super long, pretty riff, and. Justin put on a pair of tight Wranglers yeah. <laughs> and jumped on his bass and yep. threw a panty dropping bass line up panty on there. dropping bass line. <laughs> yeah, mostly my panties, but... Well, uh, yeah. Still counts. No, not, not any one of, of, of any consequences, panties. No. It's just every time that, that song plays, I drop panties. <laughs> Tony, and All you're right. drumming? I think, uh, I think... It is hard to have drumming because my panties are drumming. <laughs> no, not at all, really. I just ignore it. He's getting used to it now. Um, I think that that song had, like, more of a contrast to it where a lot of our other stuff has... It's just more aggressive sounding, and it just kind of worked out. And it is. I mean, now that we're, you know, kind of at the end here, it, it, it's a range and um, of sounds, and, you know, there's that variety for sure so um well should we go ahead and take a listen to the bedazzle that shit i think you should probably not <laughs> okay fine. i think you should bedazzle the shit out of it yeah yeah get your get your bedazzler out and sparkle it up sparkle motion let's do it track on the new Destination Exile record from Simothwa. So why don't you guys tell us, um, I know you have the record coming out next week, there's a show coming up, so give us the details on that. 
June thirtieth. Lee's at Liquor Lounge. Lee's Liquor Lounge. And uh, the label we're on is Zero Budget Records. And we're playing with all zero budget bands. Playing with Heat Beast, Kuninun, Us, Deep Haven, and Zenith Waves. And uh, yeah. That's that's the gist of that. And then we have. Uh, what is it seven dollars at the door? That's I don't know. It's, it's dollars at the it's talking. dollars at the door. And get off your ass and go to a local show. That's, I that's believe it's it, I it believe really it's two dollar Jack and Cokes. Yeah, right? two dollar Jack and Cokes. You cannot two dollar Jack yeah. and Cokes. And they don't skim. Ten bucks the Jack will get yeah. you where you need to be. Yeah, <laughs> get off your wallet. Twenty bucks. Um, and then and we'll the, also be selling. Um, uh, we're playing the Top Secret Metal Fest this year, which has become pretty popular, and so we should have tickets so for that to third, sell. Third one? Third one that they're doing, yeah. I think. It's, uh, you buy so, a ticket, you know what the bands are, but you don't know the location until 24 hours before the show. So it's like an all-day event, there's, and it's kind of become yeah, there's a lot like, of you know, bands. There's like 30 bands. So we'll probably have like a... 20? 30? Yeah, I think the tickets are fifteen bucks, so we'll probably have some kind of a, you know, buy, give us twenty bucks, get a get a ticket for the top secret plus a CD, something like that. Yeah, or like seventeen dollars, you get a ticket, and then you get a high five from me, from Dustin. <laughs> That'll be. Uh, that's, I mean, nineteen dollars. You can take that one home. CD and a bologna sandwich. Yeah. Well, there probably will be some bologna at the CD release show. I know everybody doesn't want to have it happen, but I'm going to make some bologna packages. <laughs> there will be bologna there. There will um, be bologna. That sounds like a terrible movie. No, <laughs> Yeah, it's like there it's will be blood, but there will it's be bologna. It's my milkshake. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if people want to find um, more info on the show next <clears throat> week and then also the Top Secret Metal Fest, where can people find you guys? Facebook? Yes. Website? At the old Facebook and backslash Cymothwa Music. I believe. C Y M O T H O A. Yeah, that's how you spell it. And then we got a band camp, you know, band camp, Cy Mothwa. It's just look up, look up Cy Mothwa band and you'll find us. Okay. If you look up Cy Mothwa Exigua, you will find the crustacean slash parasite we are named after <laughs> and uh that's a fun read too so so google go. accordingly mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah um and then the record that'll be out you guys will have that online and then itunes spotify as well. uh it's All the last the last two albums are on itunes spotify Bandcamp, all that jazz so now we're just waiting on you guys to put this up on your website. <laughs> yeah. Which will happen, and we'll yeah. have links to the show where people can get tickets and all, right, all of that as well. We'll, so. we'll race. <laughs> well, Who gets it done first? Deal. It's on. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you again so much, you guys, for yeah, coming in. And um, again, this is Cy Mothwell. They're from right here in the Twin Cities, and we appreciate your guys' this time, and we're excited about the new record and what you guys are doing. And um, seriously, we're excited for you guys. So looking thank forward you. to the show. And that was uh, Track by Track with Simothwa, everyone. So thanks for listening. This is Jessica from Twin Cities Media and Langan from Twin Cities Media as well. So She wasn't thanks. even there. She was here, so thank <laughs> she you. Was, she was just over there. <laughs> thanks for listening. Boner. <laughs>